In part one, I showed you how to set up a simple saltwater aquarium for just $182 or £182. And that setup is not only affordable, like an IKEA bedroom, it is also designed to be modular, so you can easily upgrade it as you progress in the hobby instead of having to buy a whole new tank. So today, I'll show you the affordable upgrades you can add when you're ready to move the tank from fish only to reef ready. And if it's your first time here and you want a new reefing video every week, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the lid to show you that a reasonably priced tank can also look like a really nice piece of furniture. All of the premium tanks in the hobby have this rimless look and because the glass on this tank is just 5mm thick, it is even more crystal clear than the glass on my £2,000 Red Sea Reefer tank. Now if you remove the lid, you will need to put some sort of cover on it to stop fish jumping out. If Free Willy can jump over this hill, you can bet Nemo can flip himself over the rim and onto your carpet. And with no lid, you'd need to replace the fresh water that evaporates every day, either manually or with an auto top-off pump. Now I'd recommend running this tank with the lid on to save the additional £100 or so you'd need for a cover and an auto top-off. But I wanted to show you that a budget tank can look just as nice as a premium tank. And in a year's time when you get hooked on the hobby, you can simply upgrade this tank to rimless instead of having to buy a new one. And if you do take the lid off, remember you'll need to replace the evaporated water with fresh water, not salt water, as the salt gets left behind. Ask your science teacher. Now the tank itself is looking slick, we're going to need proper water movement for when we add corals. Getting flow right in a reef tank is at least as important as getting light right. Flow brings oxygen, nutrients and elements like calcium to your corals and takes away their waste to keep them healthy. But it also stops detritus from settling on your sand bed and makes the tank look like less of a stagnant pond and more like a slice of the ocean. So to achieve that you'll need a good pump. Now you can pick up a basic powerhead for less than 30 quid, but any powerhead that cheap will be severely limited. Most importantly, it will only create constant one directional flow all day long, i.e. the power options are limited to on or off, which would be great if we were trying to create a river, but the last time I checked there were no corals in the Thames. And ultimately, while this is a budget build, I want to show you that that doesn't mean you have to compromise in doing things properly. So for this setup, we're going for a Jekod SOW4. Now Jekod are the king of the affordable reef tank brands, and I happily run their equipment on my own high-end reef tank. And the SOW4 will only set you back around £55 or $55, which is great value for money given the features and power you get. You can adjust the power level from 30 to 100% and it also has different flow modes so you can more closely match the random turbulent waves of a real life coral reef. Now just one of these pumps will be plenty for starters but you can simply add a second at the other end of the tank if you get addicted to the hobby and end up with a tank packed full of corals and you find you need more flow. And now we get on to the most fun purchase, lighting. Now reef tanks can be sphincter-puckeringly expensive and most budget lights are Chinese black boxes which are a bit of a lottery. But for this setup I'll be using an established and respected German brand without bothering your overdraft. The light I've chosen is a Tunzi Marine Eco Chic. It's a completely waterproof light bar that will give a really crisp white blue look to your tank and it will cater for just about any coral you put in this tank. I've personally used these lights to grow the trickiest to keep corals in the world so they will be just fine for the beginner friendly soft and LPS corals that will go in this tank. Now light strength for corals is measured in par and the Tunzi gives between 50 and 200 par across the key parts of this tank which is pretty much exactly where you want it to be and that will provide enough power to keep your corals growing and healthy without overpowering them and bleaching them which is easily done with other more powerful lights. Corals also need the right light spectrum and you can see that the Tunzi spectrum represented by this black line is mostly on the left hand side among the blue light which again is exactly what corals need. So this is the perfect light for your first tank because it is the cheapest LED available that was designed by a legit reefing company for the sole purpose of keeping corals. 
And because this setup was designed with future planning in mind, you can easily just add a second Tunzi light if you want to cram the tank wall to wall with corals, or if you just want to move on to the more higher light demand corals. Because it's completely waterproof, you can have it submerged like I have it here to keep it out of the way, or you can have it under the lid without worrying about it getting wet from evaporation and humidity. And despite all of that, it costs just £60 in the UK and $80 in the States. Now the title for this setup promised it would be a simple tank, and Mama Reef Dog didn't raise her no liar. In part one, all we added was a small filter, a heater, and some rock and sand. And today, by upgrading the light and adding a flow pump, that really is all the equipment you need to make it ready for corals and start your own reef tank. Now before I tell you the total cost of all of this, there are a couple of other accessories you may want to consider. The rock and sand will do just fine for filtration in this tank, but if you want to go belt and braces, you can add a small in-tank skimmer like the Fluval PS2 for around £45 or $67. A skimmer pulls out fish poop from the tank to help control nitrate and phosphate levels and therefore keep algae at bay. And because regular weekly water changes are so important to running a small system like this, you'll want something that makes the task as easy as possible, so it's well worth picking up a water change kit and sand cleaner like this one from Fluval. It has an adjustable flow valve which makes it easy to clean your sand without sucking all of it out, and it has a squeeze valve to start the siphon so you don't get a mouthful of fish poo every time you do a water change. They only cost about 10 or 15 bucks, and that is great value for something that makes life easier and stops you eating fish poo. So to the total price then, after part one of this video, the cost of the tank, filter, sand and rocks was £182 or $182 US. And adding good quality light and flow to this setup to make it ready for corals will cost a further £115 or $135, which brings the total cost to $317 or £297. And I challenge you to find a setup with this much water volume and equipment this good for less money. Spoiler alert, it can't be done. Now I should finish up by saying the corals will be coming out of this tank after I've made this video. I've put them in to show you what you can achieve, but you'll want to wait at least a couple of months before you add your first coral. Corals just don't do well in a new tank, so letting the tank go through the initial stabilising period before you add corals is the best way to go. At the same time, this hobby is not just about fish and corals, and there are some awesome little critters you can add in the meantime to keep you entertained and who will also clean the tank for you. Hermit crabs are a must for any new reefer as they'll eat algae and scavenge for scraps of uneaten food, all while tottering around hilariously in their little mobile homes. And the king of algae eaters for a nano tank like this is the Blue Tuxedo Urchin. It is an algae eating machine and is the single most effective critter at keeping your tank free from the green stuff. And finally, no tank would be complete without cleaner shrimp. They're an iconic critter for the hobby and they'll also scavenge uneaten food your fish don't get, so they earn their keep as janitors. Now the point of this two-part video series has been to show you that you can have an awesome saltwater setup without first having to harvest your internal organs and sell them on the black market. And as such, I've deliberately kept it light touch in terms of the ins and outs of how a tank like this runs. So if you've got any questions about how to run the system, the hobby in general, or if there's anything I haven't covered, ask in the comments section below. And not only will I respond to all questions personally, but I'll also do a live stream shortly after this video in which I'll run through the most frequently asked questions in more detail. And finally, this is not a sponsored video, so I've bought everything you've seen in both parts with my own money. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.